Hi, Lucy. How are you today? Hi, Susan. Yeah, I'm really well. How are you? I'm well, thank you, too. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm really awesome. looking forward to our conversation because I know that um, the environment is something that you are very passionate about and have been for a very long time. So, um, but I guess what I don't really understand is what, what's the driver behind that? Why, why? What's your why? For me, yeah, what's my why? Well, I've spent 35 years um, underwater, not all the time, obviously. Um, so my passion is for marine life, and I believe that it really doesn't have much of a voice because um, most people can't actually see it um, unless uh, it's on their plate, perhaps, and then they don't really relate to the underwater world, coral reefs, and the, the problems, the environmental problems facing that area of our world and uh, I don't think people realize quite how serious it is you know you you see things in the media from time to time about the Great Barrier Reef this and the Great Barrier Reef that and Caribbean this and but actually in in tangible terms um, we are all in in great danger because fish come from coral reefs they don't just they don't just, I mean, some fish do spawn in the middle of the ocean, but very few, most things come from a reef. If we lose our reefs, then it follows that fish are going to become extremely rare. And that's a part of the biodiversity which is supported um, in a sustainable package. So Anna, you've taken that passion and, and interest and understanding and done something particularly practical with it haven't you <laughs> yeah i um i wanted to make i wanted to make a difference um i've always wanted to help people understand what's underwater so that they could enjoy it and love it as much as i do um but now i really just want to protect it as much as i can and support it um so i've decided to i decided some years ago to get trained as a sustainability auditor for certification and understand more about sustainability and how it can help um, well any any business really but most notably the tourism and the hospitality business because the impacts that um, these industries make are actually quite huge um, so yes um, and i'm thoroughly enjoying it absolutely love it so what what does the sustainability auditor do what does that mean to me if i'm a the operator of a hospitality business or a tourism business um well the reason i signed up with the company that i'm partnered with uh, which is a global company called green globe um, because they have one of the highest um, set of standards that you can get and my job is to help a business to to gain a certification but also at the same time well later on i would audit the company and auditing is involved a visit on site when i check i actually find proof and evidence that they are actually doing what they say they're doing because um i suspect uh, a lot of your clients uh, know the term green washing and it's a it's been going, I mean, it's been going around for well over 10 years um, because a lot of these, some maybe the bigger hotel chains, which um, you might not have as clients, um, they, they knew they had to say they were doing things um, that were helping the climate and people and the environment, but they weren't actually doing them. They don't actually check that it's being done. And that is what I do. So if you sign up for certification, it means that you have an external independent auditor person who comes out and checks you're doing it. So it's the only real authentic, honest way that clients and customers can see that you're really, really doing what you say you're doing. So you're walking the walk, not just talking the talk. So to yeah, speak. well, yes, very much so. And it's, I think now more than ever, it's becoming more and more important. Um, you just have to look at, eco labeling on cosmetic products and all sorts of other products um you know animal friendly and um now it's environmentally friendly and we're looking at fashion it's become a huge trend now in fashion to be to really take a more circular approach to the way you run your business 
I mean, I even um, heard about a, a carpet company, which really shocked me. They have a circular business. And these, this company is making carpet from, from old carpet they've used. They recycle it somehow or yeah. other. Well, recycle it. They, they recycle it themselves. They don't send it away to a recycle plant and never see it again. It's very impressive. So it is amazing what you can do. So, again, back to hospitality and, and tourism. Aside from the fact that I think most people today have a an environmental conscience and mm. would understand why they should be concerned and why they should be looking at implementing measures, but also they're business people. So what's in it for them holistically, I guess. So, you know, just well, not looking at the business benefits as well as the environmental benefits. The whole concept behind a sustainable certification or even just becoming more sustainably run is to keep in balance profit let's put that one first <laughs> people and planet they can come either way around but a business has to run and a profit profitably and the idea behind sustainability is that it's run without harming the environment and without harming people so that would be um, their their employees but also guests and the planet there's all sorts of there's there's a myriad of ways where you can um, um you have to improve your positive impact on those things and reduce your negative impacts and there's a long list of those i'm sure and, and i guess that leads to the, the kind of perception perhaps whether it's a real or or, or not the perception that undergoing a certification of this nature can be onerous as far as the business is concerned so yeah. can you maybe give a an example of a couple of things that are actually would be form part of certification but actually would be really easy for a business to implement well uh, absolutely um first of all i'd like to say that it is actually a commitment to a journey you don't you don't suddenly become sustainable um, you're basically committing to a journey which can take a number of years it can take as long as you like so long as each year you add to the pluses and you've reduced your minuses and that is what i check so um, that bit makes it slightly easier so to start the journey you only have to comply with 50 percent of the compliances which isn't that difficult especially if you've already dipped your toe in and you've probably got a few things set up in the business already. So um, be a couple of those things within that yeah. percent. What would the... Yeah. Well, one of, one of the things that's important to me and it should be important to everyone is, is water, conservation of water. So not only are you... So here's a negative and a positive. So if you catch water, you are producing a positive. And if yeah. you... If you don't, then it's wasted. And it's one of the things that I, you know, we see in Britain where we get these, these weeks possibly where it rains a lot. <laughs> and don't then we get enough. flooding. So how do you counterbalance that? Well, you, you don't let the water run down the drive or come off, come off the um, roof and go into nowhere, although it, it needs to be caught. And I understand there's a little bit of cost involved in, in doing that, but the benefits are huge because you'll save money on your on your water bills even if it just waters the garden and the grass and you know obviously in hospitality you know you've got to present yourself as being it has to look good yeah. everything has to look good and organized well let's have green grass we don't want a time when summer or it hasn't rained for six weeks and you're thinking well hang on my water bills are going to go through the roof no they aren't because we we've, we've dug a hole in the garden and we've we're collecting it we're pumping it out there's all sorts of ways you can do that and then you can cut down on your water flow to your various taps shower heads um, dual flush toilets so there's that sort of thing making sure hoses have got a um, a gun on the end so a stop a, some kind of stop valve so the guy that he answers his phone or he gets the text from his mum or whether the you know the gardener and he's thinking and all of it you know all the while the water's in the hose is just flowing down somewhere and he picks it up, oops, Daisy, 
or you're, you're filling the pool and you've left it on and you go and have a cup of tea and come back and all of a sudden the pool's all flooding over. And so there's lots of easy ways to cut back on water um, and, and, catch, and catch water as well. So that would, that would be one you could do. Plastic is the thing that most people kind of think of. And, and I know there was yeah. the government had, I believe that the government was actually going to uh, make single use plastic um, illegal by, by April um, sort of, um, of this year. And it's been pushed back because of current circumstances. But plastic is something that most people will, most people's minds would immediately go to when talking about sustainability and being green. Yeah. It is huge. And um, again, especially in events and venues and um, uh, weddings and that sort of thing, or even running hotels, um, any, any part of this industry kitchen. Um, it is hugely important to, to reduce your uh, single use plastic. And, it, and nowadays, of course, it's, it's very easy to do because there are lots of alternatives on the market. And you've got things made um, from um, coconut shells, and there's, a, there's a, an, an English company, so it's best to try and buy local. We don't want to have too much footprint on how the actual product gets to you. Carbon footprint, I should say. Um, and Vegware is the UK one. I'm not, I'm not aligned with them, but there's a, it's, it's just nice to promote a company that uh, is, is, is English to start with. Um, and they provide absolutely everything. Plates, cutlery, glasses, that are alternative and biodegradable and it's best to try and use things that are biodegradable rather than compostable because very often it has to be composted in an industrial compostable situation it won't yes and this this is where it gets tricky because the government need to catch up and actually there probably are some industrial compost composting areas in the uk but the uk is quite large so they might not be close enough um, but it's that's something that you need to look into when you're ordering things and double check you know do your due diligence and when you're ordering things with a company make sure that what how compostable or biodegradable it actually is and i suppose again that speaks to fully understanding the supply chain of what you are using within your Very much. um and as you say doing that due diligence of 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 asking the right questions very much so. So the other, well, I'd like to mention a whole load of them, but um, <laughs> I've got five. Um, the other one I think that's hugely important because it sends, a, it, it sends a consumer message to everyone you can think of, your customers, um, the people you work with, and the government, is to switch to a green or renewable energy supplier. And again, nowadays, it's very easy to do because you're then promoting to, to the government, especially to stop handing out money to um, fossil fuel providers. So the more people switch to green energy suppliers, I'm not saying you should actually go and buy solar panels, although that's obviously the next step. Um, if the government realize they're, they're batting for the wrong team, then they will pick up the baton eventually. I mean, when I say that, I'm not saying a long time because we've only got 10 years really to make a huge impact on greenhouse gas uh, reduction. Um, so that was that was one. Um, reducing your own power use. I'm sure most of your car clients will be doing most of the things, but I will just quickly run through. If you've got AC units, make sure that they are um, up to date, modern, perhaps with motion sensor. So if nobody's in the room, they're not switched on. Um, LED lights, um, your appliance is all energy efficient um, and you're, they're set on energy in an energy efficient way as well because sometimes you can have freezers on full where really they don't need to be. So just make sure all your appliances are energy efficient and they're working to, a, to, a, to, the, to the optimum. Um, what else? Um, kitchen extractors. Uh, that's something that might be on all day. Well, do you need it on all day? Make sure it's got variable speeds so you can have it on different powers using less energy. Um, pool settings if you have a pool for the filtration system because I know how much uh, energy that, that uh, takes up. I'm sure there are loads of other things. Um, yeah, so there's, I mean, this is, it's a fascinating and very deep topic that I know we've hmm. kind of, we've literally just skimmed the surface of right <laughs> now. Um, 
but it is i mean it truly is fascinating and i think for all businesses in whatever industry but I, as you say i think particularly in hospitality and tourism where you're it's not just about your own business is it it's about um the view that you're guests and customers take of your business um yeah. and and it can only be more positive if you have sustainability running through your approach and i i love that profit people planet um mm. the three p's very simple and easy to remember and the fact that profit comes first from a business's point of view let's be yes, honest of course is is going to be be key so um lucy it's been absolutely fascinating thank you so much um You're very welcome and, um, I love how you've turned your passion into something that is a real practical help and support to the planet. Thank you. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Susan. Take care. Bye. Bye.